We are in Phuket's famous old town, full of colorful Sino-Portuguese shop houses, curated cafes, and incredible local food. We've got the morning to explore before heading off to a new destination, so let's get to it. We're here on Talong Road, which is arguably the most exciting part of Phuket town, but other streets are full of things to discover, so let's go see what this place is all about. Oh, this is soy ramen -y. Oh, it's so cute! My Insta selfie. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool. You wanna get my picture? Yeah. <laughs> this is Soy Ramani, and if you've ever looked up Phuket Old Town online, you've likely already seen these iconic buildings and Instagrammable photo ops. What you might not know is that before this place was dotted with posh guest houses, fancy ice cream parlors, and crawling with influencers, it was actually the red light district full of gambling houses, brothels, and opium dens. Really but like every other place that's made popular online, it was only a matter of minutes. The throngs of photographers and models. <laughs> Based on our experience, if you want this place to yourself, get here early because by 8.30 a.m. it starts to fill up and you'll have to wait in line to get your photo shoot on. <laughs> we already got ours. <laughs> it's terrible. We're not Instagrammers. <laughs> We're very bad. We are not good. <laughs> yeah. To see how bad we are on Instagram, go ahead and give us a follow. Show world. Show world. The soy ramen is really cool, but we're going to get some coffee and then we're going to keep exploring. Meandering our way through the beautiful streets looking for just the right cup of coffee, we came upon a place called Daily Dose and we had to check it out. Oh, it's like pastries, buy two, get one free, but only from five to eight. It's fine, we don't need to have pastries anyway. You sure this looks good? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna grab a couple of coffees here and maybe a light breakfast to share, and well, maybe these are more than just your standard coffee. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's the fanciest you. coffee I've ever had. It is very fancy. This is tray chic. <laughs> Heaven in a glass. <laughs> it's like all of my favorite things. Coffee, whipped cream, sugar, strawberries, chocolate. This is solid. I thought when I originally looked at this that it was a smoothie bowl, but it turns out it's oatmeal, which I'm more excited about. And it's really big, so I'm glad we were like splitting it. But it's chocolate oatmeal, it's got bananas, peanut butter, coconut shavings, strawberries, cocoa, and a little flour. Let's get a little bit of the oatmeal here. Mm. It reminds me of Cocoa Krispies. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah, and that's like one of my favorite childhood cereals, but it's like warm, soft Cocoa Krispie oatmeal, and I couldn't be more happy. <laughs> get a little bit of peanuts, get a little peanut butter. I think you're supposed to mix it all together at some point, but... Mm. The toasted coconut might be the best part. Oh no! It's a big one. Thank you. They do cocktails, they do food, they've got a little bit of everything. They've got cheese boards. When we first got here, we saw them loading in the bread that's baked fresh every day, and it looked amazing. So. We're gonna dig into this oatmeal and keep exploring. After breakfast, we decided to explore the town, starting at the popular Talong Road. Why is it so popular, you may ask? That's because it has some of the finest crosswalks in the world. One of the things we've noticed since being in Phuket Town is that there are so many people taking pictures at the crosswalks. We have no idea why, but there will be people literally running back and forth like 10 times trying to get that perfect picture. And it's really, really funny to see, but you kind of have to admire their dedication. Yeah, absolutely. It looks like just a normal road to me, but these Maybe crosswalks. They know something we don't. Yeah, these crosswalks must be famous. I got my famous Instagram crosswalk picture video, whatever. In true non Instagram fashion. <laughs> All right, which way do you want to go? I don't know. Let's go this way. Now you're a model. Wow. 
What I always wanted. All joking aside, the shops, restaurants, and guest houses along Talong Road are absolutely stunning. The facades look like items in a candy shop, painted in vibrant pastels, trimmed intricately in bright white. The old town just has so much character. And if you like cafe culture, then this is your Disneyland, with themed cafes on every corner. Oh, this place looks cute too. So this is another coffee shop that we almost went to, and there's actually a hotel above this coffee shop that we almost stayed at but they've got these really cute little like student desk chairs and it's called Campus Coffee, so that obviously makes sense. But yeah, it's really cute. It looks like a little school. <laughs> oh, that door. oh yeah, it's like a crooked door. Yeah. The Hogshead Phuket. So that place is really cool. It's apparently a bar and cafe that is witch and wizard themed. I'm not sure if it's a Harry Potter reference or not. I've never really watched Harry Potter. We're standing in front of the Tai Hua Museum, which is in a building that was built back in 1934. It's got a number of exhibits based on the Chinese population here in Phuket, as well as a coffee shop. Definitely worth checking out, but you have to buy a ticket to get in, and we're not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're on a time crunch. We got two hours until we have to check out of our hotel, and uh, yeah, we got to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Our next destination used to be a well-kept secret with two hidden entrances. We've heard that it's not so hard to find nowadays, but let's see if Ashley can get us there. Start. It's only three minutes away, which is good because it's hot. So of course we decide to come to Phuket in the hottest month in all of Thailand. It is scorching out, so make sure you hydrate, make sure you got sun cream on. The sun is ridiculous. And here's a tip, make sure to bring lots of sunscreen from your home country. It is very, very expensive throughout Thailand. That is true. It's definitely more expensive here than back home. We go... Right. I know. Oh no, Ashley is forever getting us lost. What do you have to say for yourself? I'm sorry, it had us on driving directions because we had the scooter the other day and I forgot to turn it off. So I was like, what? It said we were there and I'm like, we're not. <laughs> That's cool. We found it, finally. Ah. <laughs> I don't know that I can go in here. This is a shrine, so I'm gonna go ahead and guess probably not, but I'll let Mike go inside and he can tell you a little bit of history about the place. Have fun, it's really beautiful. The shrine was built in 1889 by a local family. The only way to find it was to know how to get there, either through a shoddy gate and an even more sketchy path, which has obviously seen a little bit of love since then, or by a secret door behind the toilet in a local restaurant. You can't film inside the shrine itself, so I set the camera down and went inside to check it out. Just knowing that it used to be a secret shrine, you had to know someone who knew something to get in there is really, really awesome. And now I found Ashley again. Ooh. How was it? It was pretty. Yeah? Yeah, he wouldn't let me take a camera in. Oh. So I can't show you, unfortunately. But <laughs> the shrine was really cool. There was a bunch of statues. There was fruit for offerings. There was candelabras, incense burning. It was really nice, really peaceful. And you could tell that the shrine was way older than the surrounding area. I'm glad that it's open to the public now, but it would definitely be cool if it was a well-kept secret. 
like a speakeasy yeah. shrine. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. All right, we've got one hour left before we have to check out of our hotel, so let's go grab some lunch. So Phuket has a cuisine all of its own, and we're going to a place called Lok Tien, which is a local Phuket food hall. So far, the food we've had here has been really good. This is one of the first Phuket staples that I wanted to try. So it's Kopia Sadhakian. Okay. You want to try it? Yeah. Okay. two water bottles, which is pretty crazy. So we went ahead and got the Hokkien noodles. So it's got pork, it's got little tiny little baby squid, and then it also comes with shrimp, but we opted to not get the shrimp because neither of us like it very much. I know there was squid, I wouldn't get squid either. Oops. Uh, to be fair, I forgot there was squid. We also got the popia, and if I remember correctly, these also have pork and shrimp in them. All right, here we go with these tangy, sweet pork spring rolls. I don't know how to describe that kind of tanginess, but it does have a nice little residual sweetness and a heat that comes in in the back end. And the texture is really nice because they're crispy and fresh because of the lettuce that's inside. And then you get this really nice crisp from, I think, fried shallots on top. Mm, no, I don't think that's what they are. Almost like fried pig skin on top, like cracklins or something. Oh, you know what? My prescriptions on all this, I think that's what it is. <laughs> All right, let's try these Hokkien noodles. I am not a fan of squid, especially little baby squid, but I'm gonna give these a shot and see how they are. I also don't have any idea kind of what flavor profile this has, so should be interesting. It smells fishy. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's got fish balls in it too. <laughs> so very fishy dish. If you guys have been watching this channel for a little while now, you know that Mike and I aren't the biggest fans of seafood. Uh, so this isn't my favorite dish that I've had, but I am glad that I tried it. And I know that it is regional to Phuket, so if you like seafood, definitely try it out. This is a cool spot to come to, and they've got a ton of options here. So if you don't go for these two things, there's lots of other stuff you can order. Try one of these little squids. Very interesting to eat. It's like you're eating a bunch of little fingers. Like it's very strange. <laughs> well, you are basically. Yeah. We're almost back at our hostel now. We're gonna grab our bags and figure out our next steps. So we'll see you guys when we get it all sorted. Now that that was handled, it's time to say goodbye to Phuket Town. There are new islands on the horizon and we've got a boat to catch. Let's just hope we're not too late. The ferry port is just a quick drive outside of Phuket Town. And from here, you can get to a number of different islands in the Andaman Sea. But Ashley's had her heart set on this place since arriving to Thailand, so we're gonna go to Koh Phi Phi. The journey from Phuket takes about one to two hours, depending on if you wanna take a speedboat or a ferry, and we opted with the latter. It's a beautiful ride, and there's just so much space to hang out and enjoy the view. Either option is the same price if you book online at around $12 a person. I feel like this is ultimately why we came to Thailand in the first place. Ashley has always talked about the beautiful beaches and islands in Thailand, and here we are. It was a little bit hazy out, but that didn't take away from the beauty. As we approached the port surrounded by Thailand's iconic long tail boats, it finally felt like we'd made it to paradise. <laughs> 
I'm gonna cry. <laughs> After arriving to our accommodation, we took a moment to look at where we were in the world and then we got settled in. Over the next few days, we spent time disconnecting, just enjoying the beautiful weather and bath warm waters of the Andaman Sea. We had plans to explore the island and make a video, but we decided to just take this one for ourselves. We hope you liked this video and we've got more adventures from Thailand and Southeast Asia coming out every week, so subscribe if you're new and we'll see you in the next one.